It's Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. Let's talk about the news. From Reuters, Liberians head to polls as President Weah seeks second term. Liberian President Weah is running for re-election following six years in office, defined in part by allegations of corruption and widespread economic issues. His primary competitor amongst a crowd of 19 candidates is the former Vice President Joseph Boakai, who Weah defeated once before in 2017 and who has said that the country needs to be rescued from Weah's mismanagement. Votes were cast yesterday, and about 2.4 million people registered to vote. Liberia is Africa's oldest independent republic, but the country was torn apart by a civil war that ended two decades ago, and the scars of that conflict still inform policy, as many citizens want to see the establishment of a war crimes court that hasn't yet been seriously addressed by Wea's government, which was the first to be elected after 70 years without democratic change. Liberia's economy grew by 5% last year, but about 52% of the population lives in poverty. 60% of Liberia's population is under the age of 25, and many of the people who voted in this election were voting for the first time. From Semaphore, Team Trump readies attack on RFK Jr. as spoiler anxiety grows. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announced yesterday that he would be ending his campaign to run for U.S. president as a Democrat and would instead be running as an independent, raising concerns from both sides of the aisle that he could serve as a spoiler, pulling votes from Democrat and Republican candidates alike. RFK Jr. has been floating the possibility of running for a while now, and his opinions about all sorts of things, including his support for widely debunked conspiracy theories about microchips and vaccines, antidepressants causing autism and school shootings, and that the COVID-19 pandemic was engineered to spare Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people, has enlivened some portion of the electorate while worrying pretty much everyone else, including his own family, who have denounced his presidential bid as, quote, dangerous, end quote, though other politicians seem mostly concerned that he could swipe some portion of their voter base, with Democrats initially concerned because of his family name and support for some party positions, though recent surveys have shown that he is more likely to take voters from candidate Trump if Trump does indeed become the Republican candidate. So Republican strategists have been going on the offensive and are in the process of deploying anti-RFK messaging across their communication channels. And from the Associated Press, auto workers begin strike at GM plants in Canada as talks continue. Workers at three General Motors facilities in Canada walked off the job yesterday morning following failed attempts to reach a new contract agreement with their employer. Union representatives have said that progress was made, but that there is still a wide gulf between what they want and what the company higher-ups are willing to offer. So the more than 4,200 workers they represent are going into strike mode. This follows a recent successful contractual negotiation with Ford last month and is part of a larger trend of union-organized strikes throughout the automotive and other industries around the world right now. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects, like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts, at understandery.com.